want to encourage you today, saints, in prayer. Paul told us to pray without ceasing, but what does it really mean to pray without ceasing? And why does God beckon us to meet with Him and pray continually throughout our day to Him? Prayer is one of the greatest opportunities and privileges available to all Christians. Everyone who has a desire to know God personally and deeply can pray without ceasing. It's wired in us. God waits for us to pray. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. How often are we waiting on God or too busy to include him in our conversations? God eagerly waits for us to approach him daily and hourly to welcome us as we meet him in prayer. We have the standing invitation to pray continually with our Heavenly Father who never sleeps nor slumbers. Prayer is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. It is His idea and it is His mandate for our own good and our well-being. One of my favorite scriptures, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why would God tell us to do this? Because He wants us to be connected to Him as our power source. We're in relationship with the all-powerful God of the universe, and He offers His full, uninterrupted attention as we share the desires and details of our hearts. He responds by offering His truth, His solutions, advice, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, everything laid out in His promises in the Bible. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. He goes on to promise. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Wow, what a promise. Our Heavenly Father delights when we ask, seek, knock, and receive from Him continually through prayer. Why pray? We need God's help. In this historical time of turbulence, prayer is not optional. It's essential to our lives, to our well-being, and to our nation. God is our refuge, our strength, always ready to help us in times of trouble. I lift up my eyes to the hills, and where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Paul encourages us, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Through prayer, we feel his presence and we know that we are not alone. We have holy help. God is our help and our hope and our security in these times. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. I call on you, my God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love, O you who save those who trust in you. As we commune and abide in our Creator, we find relief and respite from a bleak landscape of national and global crisis. The only hope for our broken, hurting world is God's sovereign intervention at this time. Prayer encourages us to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. In this promise, we know that He is the only source that can deliver hope and desperation, comfort and grief, and peace in this unrest. Prayer is a way of life. It's a lifestyle. It's a spiritual discipline that supernaturally brings us into the very presence of the Lord God Almighty. All for our benefit. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. Prayer shifts our focus off of ourselves, me, myself, and I, and puts our focus on him when we fix our eyes on Jesus. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, let us throw off everything that hinders and so easily entangles. We run with perseverance the race marked out for us, 
fixing our eye on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. God has made a way for us to stay connected to Him as we face all of these troubles and overwhelming challenges. From COVID to cultural division to natural disasters, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. To pray without ceasing is to talk to God all day, internally in our hearts. We have the ability to pursue Him first in our lives before any other person, thing, issue, or problem. God created us to communicate with Him heart to heart continually. He wants us to talk with Him and hear Him as we go about our days. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. This is our prayer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we come boldly to your throne of grace, bowing to you in reverent repentance and submission. We need your help and we ask for your intervention. We humble ourselves before you, submitting to your will, your way for our land and for our lives. You say rejoice always, even in the middle of the chaos and uncertainty we face on all fronts. You offer peace and steadfastness in this fallen world. We thank you and praise you because you cannot lie, you do not change, and your mercies are new every morning. You are all powerful in our powerlessness. You're all knowing in our search for answers, and you're an ever-present help in times of trouble. Lord, we humble ourselves, submitting to you. We ask that you forgive our sins and heal our land. We pray for the protection and provision of our families and our children. We pray for schools, school leadership, faculty, and students. We pray for our military, our police, law enforcement, and for the security and peace of this great nation. Thank you, Lord, for our freedom. We ask to continue being one nation under God. We pray for your solutions to the coronavirus pandemic, and we lift up all of the medical community and their families as they steady the front lines in every COVID case. We pray for the president, the vice president, and all of our government along with all of their families. We pray for compassion and kindness towards one another, respect and reconciliation between all races, all people, and healing in communities torn by violence and injustice. You say we're all one in Christ Jesus, and we worship you as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We pray for the church and for our religious freedom always. We pray for church leadership, ministries, and for all of their families. We ask for boldness to stand firm on the Word of God and to offer the gospel of Jesus Christ to this hurting and broken world. We pray for salvation for the lost, and we ask that you renew our strength so we can persevere in these times of tribulation. Lord, your love endures forever. You do not fail. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. You never fail. Love never fails. We surrender to your purposes in our lives and in our country. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Be encouraged and keep on praying without ceasing. God hears your prayers, he loves you, and he answers our prayers.